use a uh, pre-soak, and it's not quite like a compost tea, but it has added mycorrhizae, and ectomycorrhizae likes um, shrubs, and endomycorrhizae likes flowering plants and things that are non-woody. The other thing we add sometimes to that is something like a worm compost. And um, so we'll use it as a pre-soak. So we've got here a nice big tub. We're pre-soaking some of our grasses. And you can see that they get pretty dry on the bottom. So we want to loosen those up. And, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll even cut the roots a little bit. So we might poke some holes in it. If you have a pocket knife, really scoring that a little bit. Sometimes you can score it like so. I'm just gonna kind of pull this away. And you can see it's still dry in there, so I'm gonna put it back in. If it's not deep enough, just roll it around in there. And that pre-silking, make sure that the whole root ball is not dry. Because even with overspray here, Oftentimes it's a pretty shallow um, irrigation system, especially with grasses. Um, anyway, so what we're trying to do is we've already got quite a bit of, the lawn has been shrunk quite a bit. So now what we're trying to do is enhance those areas with perennials. So um, perennials and grasses. So first thing you wanna do is make sure that your plant placement is good. Uh, we really design with on-site microclimates. So we don't just come to the site once and think we have a, have a design. And even when we work with a designer, we put together, make sure we come back out and everything's really in the right spot. So we've got, this tree was trimmed down because it's a snag. So there's a lot more sunlight coming in through here. We got a really nice root ball, lots of good roots. New root hairs coming out. And if it's already pretty saturated or wet from the nursery, you don't want to oversaturate it because then you'll be making it soggy. And then you'll be taking away all the oxygen that the microbes need. So why give it the microbes? Um, you know, we add these extra microbes because so many of our conditions are really, are really sad in the landscape. And we've done a lot. We've had a lot of microbes and compost tea to the grasses. But now here we are working along the edge very compacted soils. And so if you're in that situation, not only do you dig the hole larger, you know, this is about, you know, we've got extra room along the outside and then extra room underneath. But what we're gonna do is, we wanna score the edges too, because a lot of times plants can have a, a shock. They go from this perfect little and growing environment in the pot perfect little potting soil and then you put them out here in the dead man zone and then you want it to survive. Well our native plants are pretty hardy but they get kind of spoiled in the nursery too. So that's why I brought some happy frog. I'll do a little promotion for happy frog. Uh, we usually get our, our soils from instant landscaping. They're the local boys we love. So this is a lot like regular potting soil. We're gonna add a little bit. You never add more than, usually a third is about the right amount. For native plants. And I wanna mix that with the native soil because I'm trying to give them a little transition between the pot and the native landscape. So now we wanna fill this with water and then let it drain. We've got a hose, we'll do that, but I just wanna cut this short. So uh, it's already been dipped. The hole's already drained, we'll say. And then if I, I lay my plant in here, is that the right height? Because this is another really important part. What do you think? No, it would bury half the plant. So you really want your plants to be level with the surrounding soil. So this has all been it's pretty shoddy soil right here, so I am gonna add a little bit more compost to it. Organic matter helps to hold the nutrients. So, 
So filling in the hole, I could take out the pine cones. Although different sizes of soil particles are good. You don't want soil all the same size because then it's a monoculture just like corn, okay? We don't need any more monocultures in the world. We're here for biodiversity. Okay, so this is all gonna be moist soil. So I'm just kind of making this quick. So you can, once it's all been in there and you've added water and you press it down, you double check the height. You want the height here. You don't want the height way up here either. That's just as bad or worse. Okay, all this is really important roots, but it's gonna dry out right there. So if we see a plant like this and you're the crew leader, what are you gonna say? We need to go deeper, let's plant that again, okay? This is not, we want it to be nice and level, okay? And all this is gonna be nice and moist soil mixed in. And uh, break this up a little bit, this is just old organic matter. Okay, now that's good. Nice and level with the surrounding spot here. And if it's a really steep slope, we might level right around the plant to catch a little bit of water. We've added organic matter, which holds the nutrients. We've added microbes. We've got a well oxygenated system. But the other thing that microbes need is they need water. None of the processes that, that uh, take place uh, in the plant are without moisture. So that's why moisture is really important. And in the desert, you need the organic matter to also help hold the moisture. The purpose of filling it with water before you plant it? Just to really get that soil to be moist. Because even if you water it on top, it chances are it'll run off. Oh, we add a little bit of, a couple drops of soap just to break the surface tension because what happens is the water uh, molecules are so tight that water striders can ride on the surface just like it's ice. But if you put a couple drops of soap in there, it breaks that surface tension. And then that allows the water to percolate through down into the ground.